No one gets off an MT-10 with a frown. It's just as simple as that. It's like experiencing motorcycling again for the first time. It's completely different to any other bike. It's the character that Yamaha has put into that engine. It's never a boring ride. Any corner exit at any speed, you crack open that throttle and it doesn't matter if it's my first ride in two weeks or I've been there 10 days in a row, I get the same stupid grin on my face. <laughs> The riding position, pretty much perfect. It's um, very neutral. You can spend all day riding it if you want. We've done a big trip to Phillip Island. I think we did 3,000 Ks over six days. And I got home and I wanted to jump back on it again. It's extremely versatile. I mean, that's one of the main reasons why I'm now on my third one, because it just does everything. The engine, the, the CP4 engine is like, nothing else that I've ridden. It's got a character all of its own. I've ridden and owned inline fours, um, have ridden some V-twins and V-fours. The CP4 is the perfect engine, I feel. The power in the mid-range, uh, the just that instant torque of the across the whole rev range. The bike is so confident and inspiring, it almost provokes you <laughs> into giving it a lot and with the electronics and everything it, you never feel like it's going to be too much it keeps itself well in check and you can just go as hard as you want pretty much <laughs> so i had the 2008 r1 that i converted to a street fighter put big bars on it and from then on that was the end of my sports bike days on the road it's all been um, naked bikes from there on out Naked bikes, um, it's the best of both worlds, really. You get more than enough power and you get all the comfort. And I'm not old enough for a sports tour yet. <laughs> Currently own a 2019 WR450. I've got a 2016 R1 for the track and now the 2022 MT10 SV for everything else. Track, road and dirt, pretty much covers everything. I just need a adventure bike, but don't tell them this is. My other passion is photography, posting on Instagram and running the MT10 Facebook page. It's what I love to do. I've met mates through Instagram, through Facebook. Yeah, I've organized quite a few rides through the Facebook groups. I know people with MT10s from eight hours north to 12 hours south. I'm the admin for Yamaha MT10 owners. Great community there. I post a lot, maybe too much <laughs> content on there of my bike. Yeah, we pretty much just talk bikes the whole time, which would put some people to sleep, but uh, I could talk about it <laughs> forever. Which parts fit what bikes, what, you know, what features are carried over to the new model, where to buy parts from, which parts are good, which parts to stay away from, um, which ones look the best, obviously. This is a 2022 MT10 SP, pretty much straight off the showroom floor, this one. Standard, actually, the, the best new feature, I would say, is the intake and induction vents. It sounds like a gimmick, but it's 100% not. You can definitely hear the induction roar through up under your helmet when you're into it, sort of in the mid-range, and it's intoxicating and addictive. Biggest changes from this one to the old model is the new full IMU six axis electronics package. I use the suspension features every ride. I go from soft to hard, just depending on the road conditions because I always want the optimum setting. The new up and down quick shifter is super smooth and I find myself changing gear unnecessarily just to hear the pop of the exhaust when you punch it. You also get the wheelie control, slide control, just a lot smarter overall than the old version. You also get braided brake lines over the standard model, the new upgraded Brembo must cylinder, and then that gorgeous swing arm, of course. I pretty much treat all new bikes as a base to start my build from because I never, I never leave anything standard. I had zero Ks on it when I started modifying it. Riding it's enjoyable and modifying it is just as enjoyable for me. I like to make things my own. I had a whole bench full of parts before I even bought the bike. The comfort seat is definitely a must 
all the protection pieces, the EvoTech frame sliders, axle sliders, radiator guard, oil cooler guard. Also I got a nice carbon fiber rear hugger and a ultralight rear disc tank protection pads and the tail tidy. This will be a work in progress for as long as I own it. Probably the top three um, things I like about this bike is the engine, the suspension and the looks. And there's nothing really else to it. Are we done yet? Because <laughs> I just want to go ride.